Welcome to the Rakuten Technology Conference 2014. I'd like to ask our guests to take seats from front. From 16th, we will start a session titled Rakuten Travel Architecture and Development Process. The talk will be given by Executive Officer Shinsuke Hoshino and Mitsuru Saito from Travel Service Development Department. Please wait a moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will start the session Lacten Travel Architecture and Development Process. Please welcome Executive Officer Shinsuke Hoshino san. Sorry, the mic was off. I have a lot of suggestion from the behind. <laughs> so uh, so t it started from two PCs, and uh, hundred, uh, the uh, uh, speed was 100 to 128 kilobyte. That is very, very slow. I don't know if anybody remember that age, but that's how that's all we are. And that in the turn in the service wide, so 1996, we began it, and at the 2004, we merge with Rakuten and call ourselves uh, Rakuten Travel from moving forward. It used to be we called it Hotel no Madoguchi. That's why the color is, the, we use the green color. And this, this is the uh, house we are increasing the servers. To be honest, we don't have the actual number for until 2006. But I think this was how we increase the numbers. So. Uh, 
right now we kind of like a more we have more than like a close to uh, like close to like a, four, a little bit for above 400 or 500 around servers that we are we serving the service today. And the, maybe the biggest thing that uh, for the server wide is from 2007 we started to use the uh, like a regular IE servers and last year we kind of uh, completed the use uh, we finished using like an enterprise servers and we, we switched all the servers to IA servers. So that's uh, maybe the biggest thing that we are doing uh, for the uh, server wide. I just go over what kind of service we are supporting uh, for Rakuten and Travel. So of course, uh, the biggest one is domestic hotels and the other one is overseas hotels. These are the all, uh, key, feature, uh, key features that we have today. Other thing we do is highway buses, rental cars, Highway buses a little bit, it's steady. Rent, I think winter car is gonna have a very good jump uh, from uh, next year. Of course, we have a very tight connection with ANA and JAL. So we can, we can sell a ticket, air ticket, and also the uh, hotels. And we do, we do do this kind of thing for overseas too. And other thing is we have, we want to be, uh, as if you know, this converse, this uh, presentation uh, is doing English, so Rakuten is trying to be more global. So we are, we have a multilingual site, and we are, we can, uh, we can add the, a lot of uh, languages. We can go to new uh, countries very, very fast. Right now, we, we only support uh, inventory in Japan, but moving forward, maybe hopefully by uh, end of next year, we can sell any inventory in any language, and we can support. Uh, any language very, very fast. So, right, and of course, a smart device is also very, very key uh, to the success of the uh, business right now. So we have our dedicated uh, smart device team to build new apps and sometimes want to build some uh, apps, maybe doesn't mean something today, but maybe something for the future too. So we kind of, we have a team to build for very good, uh, service, but at the same time, experimental services too. And also, if you talk about, think about travel, uh, there's leisure, and but business side is also uh, very, very uh, important too. So we have a corporate travel that we can, uh, uh, we, we gonna make a connection between our big companies, so they, when they go a business trip, they can use our site to get the best of the travel. And of course, we kind of give them, uh, for the hotels, we give them this, uh, like a cloud, cloud service so they don't have to build their uh, online uh, hotel booking service. That's called Arvid. So, uh, I said like we have like 18 years of age. This is kind of our uh, product rollback today. So we, there's a core inside, like a database, and it's, there's a lot of service around it. But, well, we wanted to be very, very quick and we wanted to make uh, the time to the market was very, very important. So sometimes, uh, well, it's maybe it's not the ideal condition. But the, the best thing is we were making a, a lot of revenue out of these uh, systems. And this is the uh, system overhaul of Rakuten, uh, Rakuten Travel. So we, have a, we use a lot of technology to support this uh, uh, s system. So the b big ones are Java and PLSQL and C or C++. These are the key uh, computer language that we, we use today. We still use PLS PLSQL. Maybe that's one issue we have today. And this is the uh, overview of how the Arachnid travel is connecting. It's getting very complex, and I don't think this is very, very far from ideal. So what I want to talk about today is, so like I said, if we, if we have 18 years of history, that means a lot of turmoil, turmoil inside the service. So uh, we have a lot of uh, issues or challenges that we have to solve uh, to make our service even grow even further. So I uh, just want to talk one by one. So one, one thing that we are uh, facing is system com complexity. So like I said, I think I gave you this uh, chart. Well, all the services running, but all the many services are really, really dependent on each other. It's really tight connected. 
So if we, we want to change something here, no way, without knowing, somehow it's impacted to other services. Like, we wanted to just uh, change something for hotel, but maybe it just impacted the hotel service, I mean the bus service. Uh, that's not actually true, but those kind of things might happen and we don't know, we're really not sure what's gonna happen. And this is far from ideal. So the team was working from like very, very, uh, like five or six years ago, like from maybe from 2003, to decouple all of this so uh, we can have more productive development uh, moving forward. So the idea where we're going is, so I think this is not, this is kind of usual thing that all the services is doing, but our challenge is, our service is gigantic already. We have a lot of uh, history. That means there's a lot of services working on very closed uh, sources. So we kind of, we didn't, we chose, maybe we chose the hard way, but maybe it was the right way. So we are building new stuff with, within our current envi uh, environment. So we're not entirely making new stuff. Sometimes when we kind of want to do this, some team kind of build in, entire new database, entire can start from scratch. Well, actually we didn't do that. We kind of make the uh, API layer and then uh, we build the UI. So some APIs today, uh, some I mean services today, uses the old way of serving services, but there's a lot of, we, when we have a chance, always we are trying to refactor to make the API more usable for the services. So while we're not 100% complete, uh, it's gonna take a few more years, but hope. But I think we are getting there. There's a lot of good stuff that uh, we're uh, pulling out from this. And one uh, good example is the uh, multilingual travel site that I talked about. So this is the neat thing is there's a book booking API and search API already. And the good thing is inventory. There's an inventory API for the hotels. So this means if you kick this APIs, you can get the same uh, information from from anywhere. And the, because of this, the multilingual travel site is actually built offshore. All the uh, Tokyo developer is just focusing on the APIs because the, all, the, all the technique, all the cool stuff is in the API side. Multilingual side, they can, they're okay to fail because we're gonna test very, very heavily. So, and then uh, we, and I, I, uh, the best case scenario, we can do all the testing at the API site. So uh, this is how we are trying to accelerate the globalization inside Rakuten. So I think just in this year, we, we released this on August for uh, English, and now we kind of support like 19 or six or seven languages uh, already so far. Maybe we can target like 19 languages by end of this year. So it's very, very uh, good situation for these kind of things. So other challenges that we have is we are still using old technology like PLSQL and C. And well, I'm not gonna show you where, but there's a lot of PLSQL and C and it's still the core. Well, since PLSQL, does anyone know PLSQL? <laughs> not other than you guys. <laughs> so uh, it's a database kind of a language the funny thing is the services that built around 1990, late 1990s built on the similar uh, technologies, like Ichiba. Rakuten Ichiba was built on uh, database running uh, programming languages. They move into everything to Java already, and but so we're a little bit behind, we're kind of catching up right now. So PLSQ is a, some kind of a language that can run inside Oracle. So, uh, but these are very, very old and nobody knows it, so we have to move away from those technology. And we are going to move into Java and maybe PHP or Ruby or any languages that we want to choose. Other thing is, there's a huge dependency on the uh, single technology today. Like I said, we rely heavily on Oracle. So everything we do is Oracle. So we search on Oracle, we, uh, we give the data to the Oracle or the transaction is going to Oracle. Well, uh, I think that's okay, uh, if, but it's a little bit kind of scary if you think about it. And me, for like a transaction data, maybe we still have to stick with the Oracle, but we just thinking, do we really have to do everything on Oracle? Can we do some kind of search or something at this different architecture? So the team is now moving 
to think, uh, start thinking about what we can do to uh, limit the usage of Oracle uh, moving forward. So what are we doing is we are using NoSQL DB to have a, uh, have a uh, search engine. So right now we have a, we're using like an Oracle to do, serve all the data for the uh, search, but we are now moving into the uh, NoSQL database architecture. Uh, we are not 100% using this, but this is already online. And so these, so these services, some services are already using like multi-single single site. So this is this the multi-single site is the newest uh, services we have. So this is kind of our test bed for the new technologies. So right now, uh, so multi-single site they are not hitting the uh, Oracle for the search. It's using the NoSQL database to get all the data. The thing is, uh, Oracle, of course, Oracle is very very smart. They don't get it. For them, they don't. We can There's no way we can share the data from Oracle to NoSQL easy. So what we are doing is we build inventory core, and from there, uh, it's post kind of double posting the same data to the Oracle and the NoS, NoSQL databases. This way, we can have the same data inside of Oracle and NoSQL DB. This this is this was the reason why we started to build the inventory core. Uh, APIs. And uh, other thing that uh, Travel is doing is we want to hire a lot of a professional. So uh, I think in Japan, it's kind of like a people is more generalist. But we want to go outside of Japan and we want to compete with around the world. So that means there's a lot of talented people around the world and we have to make our team more professional. Meaning if you're a developer, you really have to be the top-notch developer in the world. If you're architecture, we are going to ask you to be the uh, finest architecture that you can be in the architecture. For PDM or product management, we oh, this is all the same thing. In the travel, we didn't have any uh, product management team or program management team. So uh, that and that's why we I'm going to introduce uh, Mitsuru, and he is kind of a professional of a PDM project manager, I don't know what he's gonna call himself, but uh, he's a very good, he, he have a lot of experience about these kind of things. So we are working very closely with him to make uh, make travel more like a product development team. So I'm gonna hand over to Mitsuru. Thank you. Thank, oh. Thank you, hoshino -san. and uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Mitsuru. Uh, from Arachnid Travel, and I'm a program manager lead in the Arachnid Travel. And like, and like he explained to me, uh, I used to be a Microsoft uh, worker for 15 years, and I am um, a program manager for 15 years uh, from the Windows 98 SE. So uh, I had uh, some experience for the program managers, and uh, now I'm uh, heading the uh, Arachnid Travel program management system. So today, I want to share what I learned after I moved from America to Japan uh, for something. So first thing is, I started from the... Oh. I cannot use the PPT. What? Okay, <laughs> now I found that one. Okay, so I wanted to start what I found as a problem in the Russian club at the first time last year. So first thing was uh, non-clear responsibilities. So. It is kind of the typical for the Japanese company or startup company or venture company, but there was no clear responsibility for in terms of the role. So each person works together uh, collaboratively and they didn't think about what needs to be done by each person. So for example, developer might be thinking about the services itself. And, uh, uh, ideally, the developer needs to think about the technology or coding or architecture, and a PDM would be thinking about the services. So such kind of the respons responsibility differences are not well defined in the rock and travel at that time. So what happened was a guy thinks this is a work for the, some other guys, but that guy thinks this is a work for these guys. So it's, it's like a catch-22 uh, situation. So uh, nothing didn't happen at that time. And at the same time, there are cases 
that uh, two guys are doing uh, multiple same things at the same time. So each guy thinks, this is my work, so I'm doing this. But the other guy thinks, this is also my thing, so he's working on that. So such kind of the duplicated things happened in many places. So that was the first issues in the Rakuten Travel I found, non-clear responsibilities. And second thing is, because of the first issue, short sight vision happened in so many cases. So each guy thinks for today or to tomorrow or one week later. So they didn't think about what needs to be happen within one year or three years or five years. Because they are thinking about the short term things or they are doing whatever they are asked to do at that time. So we didn't have the long term goal at that time. And the third thing is no definition of the product. Like hoshino -san mentioned, we had a great product, and we have uh, 20 years histories. However, no one knows what is the right thing to do in the each services, because we didn't have the good document. And uh, I asked uh, some questions to the PDM, or producers, or developers, and uh, sometimes they, don't, they said, I don't know the answer, so uh, let me check the code. Then they check the code, then he said, it is too spaghetti call, so I cannot understand what is going on. <laughs> I said, okay, can we, can we be responsible for, that, uh, for the customers? And they said, yes, because it is running. Okay, that's fine, but uh, that is the starting point at the time. Sorry, I'm saying too much bad thing, but uh, that happened in the many cases. So, uh, I, uh, you know, ideally we needed to have the document for the many cases or requirement, but at the time we didn't have the, any document. And the fourth thing is a random process. We have uh, 10 teams in the Rakuten Travel for the development, but uh, each team did uh, each thing for the development. We didn't have the defined good way to the development. In terms of the releasing, we didn't have the clear rule. What needs to be done before the releasing? But, uh, so, there are so many cases that we have big issues. And one case was interesting. Yesterday, we had a big issue for releasing something because of the database issue. The next day, different team released something. And they got the same issues because of the same issues. And they didn't share what happened yesterday. So that's why we had the same issues at one time. So that's happened because we didn't have the clear rule what needs to be done before the releasing. So such kind of thing didn't happen at that time, too. And because of those things, we had uh, some low qualities. And it was a great feature and a product, but we have uh, some low quality things. So I found this. Then what I did after that was I started from this one. This one is a clear responsibility. So in DU, we had a four types of the discipline guys. The PDM, designer, engineer, and the testers. And some designers are in the um, DU side, so we don't have that guys in our team, but we have a four types of the discipline guys in our team. Then I defined designers are design. Developers and engineers are developed, and the testers test. PDM defines the product. That's a very simple thing, but uh, that's what I said to the management team. And we had a long discussion with the managers, and uh, we did discuss and what is the right thing for that. Then we thought it is the right thing to have a separate role per the discipline. PDM is, I'm going to explain what the PDM is, but uh, for the developers, they are going to think about the developing or technology or coding or architecture. That should be the right thing. Instead of thinking about the service or communicating with the uh, customers or business unit guys, they can concentrate on the coding or development. That is the right thing. That's what we discuss in our team. So after that, we thought we had a clear uh, responsibilities role in our division. So I'm talking about that because, uh, w because of the one history thing. Like in 1990, like a Windows developer time, there was uh, some good guys, one smart guys, who could develop everything. Like a Linus could develop a Linux by himself. 
However, now the technologies or every environment are very complex because we got so many requirements from the business side, the technology side, the environment side. So any single guy cannot understand everything by himself. So we need to understand, so we have a good team collaboration. Each guy needs to be a specialist for a area or multiple areas. But uh, the clear thing is one guy cannot understand everything. So that's why we need to have the separate role. So based on that, we had this kind of discipline-based role division. So that is the background why we discuss this kind of thing. And so this is the first step that I run when I came to the Russian travel. So let me share what I'm saying to my PDM teams. So I got actually a 30 talent and a 30 tasks that the PDM need to do. But I, won't, I didn't want to explain everything in the PDM. I just showed the old talent to them as an FYI, FZMI, for their information. However, I just started from here. What's a PDM? PDM is defined on design products and services that the right customers and add strategic value to the rock team. This is all what PDM need to do. Then we can work with the developers or designers or testers to make that product happen. That is a PDM thing. Then in detail, I divided the work items for the PDM to the three based on the, our stakeholders. You might have the different stakeholders, then you might want to have the separate uh, discip uh, sorry, uh, mission per the stakeholders. But uh, I started from here. For the developers or designers or testers, we need to let them concentrate on their work, coding, architecture thinking, or testing. So if they have some communication with other teams or they have some environment issue that they cannot move on, then PDM is the guy who needs to solve that issue instead of asking them to do that by themselves. And second thing is for the business unit, and they are, for the Russian travel, luckily we have a great business team, so they are doing a great job for the selling their services. But sometimes they are thinking about for the one day thing or uh, one week thing or for the just a one time shot. That is great and that is their responsibility. That's okay. However, someone needs to think about the future. For the Russian travel, we have the many competitors uh, like uh, Booking.com or Expedia or Google is coming into the travel business right now. So then someone needs to talk about the future. Then who is going to think about the future? That is PDM. So because we are middle of the BU, business unit and development, so we can see everything from the a wide angle. So that's why we can think about the future. So the second thing is what I'm saying to the PDM team is cultivate the soil. This is, means dojo sodateru, tochi o sodateru. Cultivate the soil for the creative business unit. This is a, uh, what PDM need to do for the business unit. And the third thing is the customers. Customers is our most important for us, of course, no question. If the business is not good, or benefit is not good, and architecture or design might not good, as long as customers are using your services, the services will be good in some days. So we need to think about the customers at first. Then the most important thing is always provide the best best user experience for the users. That is the most important thing for the PDM to think about. So we have some competing things to think about one feature. Customer says blah, and business unit says blah, and engineer says, I don't want to do this. But we have to think about the customers first. So that's what I'm saying as a customer for the third thing. So these are the mission for the PDM that our team needs to do. And in Microsoft, I used to be a lead ma uh, program manager in the Ruck, uh, Microsoft. I didn't say this. However, in the Rock and Travel, we are in a great time, which means a paradigm shift from the venture side of, size of the development to the big size of the development. Now, our customers are more than 10,000 people. 
sorry, 10 million people, 10,000 is too small, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, 10 million people, more than 10 million people or 20 million people, then the system is so huge, like Hoshino-san explained. Then, and we divided the role by the discipline, PDM, designer, or developers and tester, then there are some gaps between the developer and the testers, and the designer and the developers. Someone thinks this is for the designers, but the developer would think this is for the testers. So there are some gaps between the roles. Then, for the PDM, for the rock and travel for now is, most important thing is, if there is a gap for something, PDM need to solve that issue. PDM would say, developer, please fix that issue instead of the designer. Such kind of thing would happen. But if no one can help you, I mean PDM, to make that happen, PDM need to work on that. So what I'm saying to my team for now is do whatever it takes to make the product successful. So that, I'm not going to say America, this to the American people. This doesn't work for the American or big company, but for the small company, and we are in a paradigm shift. That's why we have some, may, sorry, many, many gaps. That's why I'm saying this. This is the most important thing for the PDM right now, for the Rock and Travel. And as a PDM, you know, I'm not going to dive deep dive into this one deep, as I think you guys have already seen this kind of cycle before, because MIT or Harvard University guys are talking about this kind of the process, how to come up with a great idea or a new idea, and how to make that happen. So if you are interested in that, I'm happy to talk about that with you guys later. But uh, this cycle is the most important to come up with uh, new ideas and to make that idea to the real. So, Framing, ideation, spec, keep rhythm for the development and evangelize customers' review. So this kind of cycle is kept by the great PDM. Then that features or that company will have a great features and great services. So if you think about a great company like a Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, then they are doing a great job for this cycle. So this is what we are doing as a, but we are still on the, way to improve that process, but this is what we are doing in the Rock and Travel as the first step. And from the development perspective, um, you know, again, I don't want to talk about this in detail because there are so many discussions in the worldwide about the project management, but uh, from the Rock and Travel perspective, I wanted to make it simple as much as possible. And I didn't want all PDM to read the PMP or PM bug. That is too big book. And I don't want to say it is a wasting of time, but we don't have a time to read everything and to understand everything to make that new idea happen because we are not SIR. We are the development division in the Rock 10. So we need to come up with a great idea and we need to come up with that make it happen as a product. So we want, we. Our mission is not being a great project manager. We, our mission is to come up with a great services. So that's why I made it as a simple. So this is the process, what I'm saying. You need to have the four document before starting the development. Which is, which is a marketing requirement and the PRD product required document. I'm going to uh, discuss about that later a little bit. Uh, which is like a CO show or a functional spec in, uh, from your perspective, and a dev spec, and a test spec. So if you don't have these four documents, you cannot start the development with your developers. That's what I'm saying. And so far, 100% of the features and the changes have the PLD. We are still working on the dev spec and the test spec, but uh, we already covered the all features, 100% uh, features by the PLD on the wish list. And then we start the development test release. It's very simple, and you understand that already. It is just documented as uh, this way. But uh, this kind of the mental thing is most important for the, your teammate, I think. So that's why I wrote this kind of the chapter, very simple way. So that you, all guys in the project team can be on the same page. That's what I did.
this is a very simple one, but uh, uh, I think it's kind of important to share that with uh, your teammates. And the uh, product required document, it can be called as a functional specification. It's very simple, what you want to develop and what the developer need to develop. It has a requirement and a goal, details and uh, issues or something like that. It's very simple, but uh, clear definitions of, of the requirement and everyone can understand what was developed, what's supposed to be developed by this document. And this is the base document for the dev spec and the test spec. So this is, and again, we, we are writing the PRD for the old features for the new project. And the QA, I'm under this one, I'm not sure if the, I need to talk about this in Japan or not, but in America, sometimes a guy says, we don't need to have the tester because our developer is great. Such kind of discuss, discussion is going on. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's America. Yeah, we said that, but uh, actually that's not true. So, you know, developer cannot cover everything like I talked a little bit, and even from the uh, a perspective, it might be perfect, but uh, that cannot be work, working well from the performance perspective or from the tenant perspective, like a global, uh, globalization or localization or performance. You know, there are so many things we have to check if uh, your services will be widened to the worldwide. So we need to have the QA, and uh, this is a process that we are working on. And the information that I can share is uh, currently we have only 12 testers, but we are going to hire as many testers. So and, uh, they will have a big responsibility to keep the quality. And uh, we are going to hire the eight people more. And this is my last page, but uh, I've already discussed what I did and what was the issue. And so far, we got these things, easier to prioritize the project and we can check the status of the each project. And uh, no back and forth development. Uh, you know, before we had uh, some, this kind of a case that uh, we have discussed for the six months, but uh, now we noticed a requirement, a new requirement. Then, wait, we cannot use this architecture. We have to go back to the six months before. Such kind of thing happens sometimes. Six months, yeah, it, it was a big uh, back uh, for the A project. So we don't have a such kind of a no back and forth development anymore because of the PRD and because of the good project management. And before, we could have the just a five or six projects at the same time by the 15 producer or 15 pro, uh, program managers. But now we are running a six, more than 60 projects the, by the same, uh, same numbers of the PDM. So that's what we are doing right now. We are still on the way to improve our process, but uh, that's what we are doing right now. So I talked about the process today, but the uh, process itself is not a goal for us. The goal is to come up with a great services for the customers, like I said, in the PDM mission. So next year, I hope we can talk about the feature of our services that we developed by these new processes. So that's all what I talked. So I'm going to return my, the mic to Hoshino-san. Thank you. Right, uh, so thank you, Mitz. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, this change was happened in just a year. So uh, it was kind of crazy, right? Uh, there's a lot of new uh, ideas, new philosophy, and there's, to be honest, there's a lot of uh, conversation or maybe a little bit unhealthy conversation, to be honest. But right now, I think we really are on the same page and trying to improve this process as a team. Uh, so, and I'm not gonna say this process is perfect, but at least we have some kind of framework to make our process better day, better uh, day by day. So I think this is a great. This was a very great initiative. So last thing I, want, I just want to talk about is, well, 18 years uh, old uh, services. There's always going to have a lot of manual processes, and we have to reduce this kind of thing to reduce uh, the maintenance uh, time and to be able to do more new cool stuff to build new uh, new fe fun uh, features that makes uh, re revenues. 
So I think this is not uh, <laughs> this is not original. So we want to build this kind of a release cycle, and we want to do this automation release. And we we use a lot of Capistrano to release. We use uh, Jennifer, and we we use a lot of things. And we want to make we want to comp so. I think there's a lot of people talk about this, but there's very, these are very, very hard to make a very a complete circle. But right now, we are doing our best to make this complete circle, and I think we are getting there. I think we kind of started two years ago, and we kind of did it heavily this year. And we are getting very, very close to do a lot of unit testing and those kind of things. And right now, and this is the uh, revise, uh, we want to make this kind of a release moving forward. So usually I think design, development, implementation, and test. Well, we want to change this. Yeah, we want to change it to a kind of test-driven uh, development moving forward. So design, it, I think the MITS talk about the test spec too. So that's why we want to have the test spec in the front. So we can design the test before actually we build stuff. Hopefully we can get, the, get, this, get to this point so uh, we can have more reliable uh, code quality moving forward. Maybe this is something I really wanna show. The cool thing is all of our code today is on the uh, Jenkins. And our target was have the, all the code coverage 65% by end of year. 65% doesn't mean anything, it doesn't have any strategical meaning, but I just want to have a start, like a starting point to say, let's try to hit this far. I think the actual thing is we have to hit like 80 or 90 or some, some there, something near. But all the code wasn't on the Jenkins. And the goal was put the, everything on the Jenkins and we kind of accomplished that. And if you can see, there's a lot of stuff over 90%. So I think we are doing a lot of great job on right now, but we still have to have to do a lot of work. But these are the things that we accomplished uh, this year so far. So I just want to talk about what are we going to do from next year or from tomorrow. So a few things that I'm thinking right now is 24 5 development and trip and DevOps. I'm just gonna go one by one on this one too. Okay. So why? Why it's so a rocked in, like this uh, conversation, like uh, the presentation is all in English. Why are we doing this? Why? Because we want to hire a lot of talented, talented people around the world uh, to help our service grow. There's a lot of Japanese, but there's more non-Japanese around the world. So we want to be able to work with them as much as possible. That's why all the PRDs, all the documents, all the conversation try to be English as much as possible. Documents is all, everything in English. Conversation, well, we still have some challenge, but we are going to get there. And then we can build a team in India, France, and maybe San Fran, and then if we have a good document, like a PRD, dev spec, test spec, we can pass on the auto development around the world. So maybe this is too ideal, I don't know, but I, this is the thing I want to challenge moving forward. So maybe next year we're gonna build a t uh, development team in India. Might be a cool project to do. Other thing uh, we want to do is we want to increase the virtualization of the servers. Right now, our virtualization is like six, uh, it's only 23, 20, well, actually 20, I mean, what is it, 33%. So uh, it's not that efficient. We, we're still using a lot of real servers. So what are we going to do is we have a data center in Osaka today, but there's a already cool data center at Rakuten in Tokyo. I don't know why we're still using Osaka Data Center travel alone. So we're gonna migrate everything to Tokyo Data Center by end of, end of next year. This should be a very, very cool project too. We're gonna move, like I said, I, I said that we have like 500 services, servers. We're gonna move everything, not by hands, it, uh, like virtually. So it's gonna be exciting, very exciting project uh, moving forward. Last one is, I don't have a slide, but it's gonna be the DevOps. I think Mitz was also talking about the QA. So we are going to put a lot of emphasis on the uh, testing too. So we built a team. So last year we built a team of PDM. This year we built a team of DevOps. So next year, it should be a year of DevOps. And hopefully next year, the head of the DevOps can talk here about what he accomplished uh, in 
2015. So those are the things that we are working. And of course, we are always understaffed. So if you have any interest in doing these kind of things, I'm very happy to talk with you. All right, so thank you for your time. And that will be it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hoshino and Mr. Saito. I'm afraid so that we have to stop this session here because we are running out of time. So if you have any questions, please talk with them uh, directly in the break time. So we have a, a 15 minutes break. So thank you very much again, Mr. Saito and Mr. Hoshino. Now we will have a short time break, uh, 15 minutes break.